Hey guys, it's Danny coming to you right from my Miltoniopsis corner. That smells really great. Alrighty, today it's time to fix a little boo boo. It's not little, it's quite big. That I did with my Catacetum orchids. And I have to say, it's one of the most ironic boo boos in situations that I've encountered. Alrighty, so. I have an issue with my catacetums and it has to do with the fertilizer. If you remember, I used slow release fertilizer with my catacetums. Now, the good thing is it worked. Uh, this is my Millennium Magic. I've had it for two or three years already. It created that tiny growth, this tiny growth. This year it's creating, and I'm not in focus, this growth. We still have a leaf inside, which I presume will be yay big. This is the difference between the two years. So yes, it worked. My catacetums needed more fertilizer for my behalf. Everything is going great. Problem is, the fertilizer is a little bit excessive. <laughs> so I'll show you how it manifests, actually. It's the craziest thing. So just when I thought I showed you all the types of root burns and damages that I could ever show you, they all happened to me. There's a third one. I'm not sure if it's third or fourth. Anyway, root damage uh, exhibit c or d or f what do we notice here very very black roots but what roots are these are they aerial roots no the aerial roots are pretty okay except from the fact that they don't have moisture and the root tips don't grow Alrighty, are they roots inside the pot no as i'm gonna show you the roots inside the pot are actually not all that affected so if they're not aerial roots completely and also they're not roots inside the pot what are they the roots that are both aerial and inside the pot. So as we can see here, the portion of the root, which is on top of the medium, got burned. It's not the root tip, it's not the top of the medium, it's nothing of the sorts. It simply has to do with the capillary effect of the velamen. So, theory time, what's happening? As I will demonstrate, the quantity of fertilizer in this pot at this moment is excessive. What happens is, inside the pot, things are pretty okay. Roots are growing okay-ish, only if they don't have exposed parts. And this is because inside the pot, things are always pretty dissolved. It's always more moist and I do keep my catacetums quite moist. So the fertilizer that I have in my pot is dissolved, is available to the roots, is absorbed by the plants that's growing like monster. Problem is, the velamen directs water and nutrients for a certain length above the medium. Now, since the top of my soil is not all that far, the velamen here, this little one centimeter, does withdraw water and nutrients from within the pot. And because the quantity of nutrients is excessive, this exposed part that actually dries before I get to rewater gets burned. And the result is, I don't like the situation. And my catacetums are midway through their growth. They still need some time to mature. If you work on a catacetum during this time of the year and you manage to mess up the root system, it's not gonna end well. These are orchids with specific growth. The season pretty much is compromised for blooming or even worse, you might actually kill off the orchid. Luckily though, my setup is completely controllable so we can actually get rid of the problem. So let me show you the measurements first and then we'll go on to solving the problem. Alrighty, and we're back. Now, let's check out the salt. Let's see how much this leaked or leached. Well, we have about 400 parts per million. You might say it's not a lot, but this is an older plant. It had a lot of roots. It's a bigger plant and there's a high chance it already consumed some stuff, but the other catacetums actually were close to 700, which I believe it's extreme. Okay, before we work on that orchid, let me show you something crazy. So I repotted a different catacetum and I was just about to disinfect my table. What is this? I'll, I'll tell you, this is salt. I unpotted the catacetum, placed it here while I cleaned up the medium. And when the water left behind dried, that's what was left. This is what's on my velamen. Let's play around with it. Let's see if I can dissolve it. Yep, completely dissolved. It's purely salt and it's coming from the fertilizer. Oh my goodness, what have I done? Alrighty, so I'll disinfect the table and come back with the other catacetum. Alrighty, so the first thing that I did was remove almost completely the layer of pebbles. We're still gonna reuse them and that layer only needs a little bit of rinsing. 
And then I will also reuse this medium, but I will separate the slow release fertilizer. The best way to do so is by the use of this tray. This is an IKEA tray, really cheap, really, really useful. And it just so happens that the pebbles of fertilizer fit perfectly through these holes. So the ceramics and leca will stay in the tray while the fertilizer will go down where it will be caught by my little drain. So what I need to do now is remove the orchid from the pot and this will get a little noisy. So let's mute the video. Alrighty, and that's it. And let's take a look inside. We have good roots, we have root tips. In the pot, things were okay. The problem was outside the pot and it wasn't even the tips. Tips were okay, but wherever the fertilized water went up the velamen, things got really, really sad. So at this point, I do still have a little bit of slow release fertilizer in between the roots. I'm just gonna rinse them. If I am left with a few little pebbles, that's perfectly fine. It's not excessive, but here I have a whole lot that I wanna get rid of. So first thing, I'm gonna rinse the orchid. Next up, I'm gonna rinse the medium. And as I was saying, the fertilizer will simply go down these little holes. Medium will stay up, fertilizer in the sink, everybody's happy. Let's see if it worked. We have medium in the tray, fertilizer in the sink. And afterwards, we're just gonna pot bath the orchid. Same medium, only no fertilizer. And the last thing that I want to do is completely flush the pot. There is still some fertilizer left in the medium. Also, I used tap water to rinse the medium. And you know me, I prefer the soaking type of flush because it lets salts dissolve properly. Now, I will perform two flushes and we're gonna measure and see how we stand now. In the meantime, I soaked my Millennium Magic as well for about 15 minutes already. And to my surprise, we don't have so much salt buildup here. It's 276. That's pretty okay, but this orchid had um, quite the impressive root system it grew last year. Also, I don't have much root damage with this one. Um, you know what? I think the issue was the quantity that I used, not necessarily the fertilizer. I don't know, I do still intend to play around with this fertilizer. This one I will not repot, I will not flush. I don't think it's needed at this time since I don't have that many issues with this one. But the other two that I did, which were new catacetums, those were the worst. Okay, so about 10 minutes have passed. Let's see how we stand with the TDS right now. 146, that's not bad. Let's do this again. Okay, time's up. Let's see what we're left with. 84, 8, 90 parts per million. That's decent. Goal achieved. Alrighty, so I just finished repotting the last one that had issues. The only two that I will now repot are the Millennium Magic and the Fred Clark Chiara. The Fred uh, Clark Chiara after dark, he doesn't have all that much issues. You can see some new roots there. Both of these orchids had an extensive root system that I didn't really chop away. The other orchids, I kinda did. Plus three of them were new orchids and I had to chop away most of the old root system. So pretty logical, they didn't actually consume much due to the lack of roots, so the buildup was real. So kind of per judgment on my part, I should have placed less fertilizer to the non-root orchids, but then again, I really didn't imagine it would leach out so much. Increased fertilizer absolutely 100% works with catacetums. I am so delighted and excited about the two black ones that I have and hopefully they will bloom this year. Never in a million years would I have thought the millennium magic from those tiny puny little bulbs it created in the previous two years would go to the massive size that it will reach this year. However, though I went too much to the extreme, extremes are not good. So I don't expect them to be set back or anything. I didn't manage to destroy the good roots. For all intents and purposes, they didn't even really feel what happened, but I got rid of most of the fertilizer and I think things will be pretty well from now on. They still have the full season to grow and with a bit of luck bloom. So there we go. Hope you learned something from this. If you don't have a really good root system on an orchid, 
don't go crazy with the fertilizer even if it's an orchid that creates massive roots really really fast um, kind of overestimated catechetums in this regard if your orchid is doing perfectly fine with the slow release fertilizer you're using don't work on it let it be so let me know down below your experiences with Osmocote versus Mineral Grow. No, Miracle Grow. But the version that is actually slow released based on temperature. I think there are two types of slow release from Miracle Grow. So mind you, the one that is supposed to be like Osmocote, but I'm not sure if it is. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope it was interesting. You know the drill, if it was useful, give it a thumbs up. If it was horrible, give it a thumbs down. If you like to stay up to date and watch more Orchid videos from me, simply subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss any boo-boo. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! Great success! The yellow bird I just purchased is full of new growths. I have one here, one here, so two, one here on the pseudobulb that remained leafless, two more here, it's already starting to put out roots, and I think I saw another one there. Wow, such a vigorous grower. I mean, you guys who have it already told me I'm gonna love it because it does grow very fast and it's a prolific new growth developer, but oh my, I was not expecting this. So, really good candidate for a specimen orchid, don't you think? Remember what I told you yesterday or two days ago? I'm into specimens now. Do I have the space? I tend to think so, but usually what I think versus reality don't match all the time. But hey, where one orchid fits, two can fit as well.